Hey YouTube, I'm going to do a diaphragm replacement on this steel S10. I'm going to fix it and more than likely post it on eBay. But if anybody on here has any interest, let me know. This vent line is pretty much gone. Um, this is heat shrink tubing over that and uh, there's no kill switch and I think it was either melted or something just by the way it's kinda you know so anyway It doesn't have the right linkage for the choke either. It has a piece of wire on there. But I know it should run with a diaphragm kit in there. We'll see. And the diaphragm is hard, so. To get that cover off, it was just three bolts, one in the head, and then two back here. So it's pretty easy to get off. There's no, you don't have to worry about any throttle linkage, it's just the way it sits on there. Contacts it, which is kind of nice. You don't have to try and get something in a hole while you're trying to put it on. kind of a pain to get back on because where those nuts are is really tight to get to, especially if you have decent sized fingers. So. Alright. A little better shot of what I'm doing. I think it's funny how 
older things like this versus here's a Zama carburetor and right here is where your diaphragm is and you can see China stamped into that it's just a little stamped piece of metal where this one's actually a machined piece or cast piece you know it has six screws where this one has two you know it's just built so much better than today's stuff it's amazing it probably cost them if they were well I guess they still do make these but they're not really that common anymore but I mean something like this to build would cost so much more than one of those just one of those things that goes to show the new stuff isn't always the best in my opinion at least you know things from this era were built just so much better this is they built these S10s from 68 to 73 so if you don't see a whole lot of plastic on it that's for sure And the adjustment on one of these is also second to none. You know, you have your high speed, your low speed, your idle. And those, you know, you just don't get near the adjustment that you do on one of these. Alrighty. There's the diaphragm. And, you know, you can see it more or less wrinkles instead of moves. So, that's the reason we're replacing it. And a lot of that has to do with today's ethanol fuels. They, uh, they really play hell with these diaphragms. couple of little locating pins, three of them. That goes on there. And over here you have your little reeds and whatever you want to call them. Another gasket and then that. And I got it all new, so if you got it, replace it. That goes on there. It goes on here like I originally thought. 
so this needs to go in here first. Usually your little valves like this and then your diaphragms are actually on different sides, like on all these new ones. You have your diaphragm over here and all these reeds are on the opposite side. So it's not quite as confusing, but you know. I'd rather have a confusing one than one that's built to withstand a well. If I get this thing back together and it runs, it'll see it was if it was made in 73. Almost 40 years old. How many saws do you how many little two strokes do you know that can do that? I don't even know if it's ever had a rebuild. I don't know how much it's ever been used, but it has good compression. These have a cool disconnect for the fuel line too. Makes getting this carburetor on an awful lot simpler. There's also two little bushings that go on those bolts, little studs where you put this on. I knew what I was doing. The nut on this side actually wouldn't come off if you couldn't move the carburetor back. That's how tight it is. The one on the side closest to me is a little easy to get on but not a whole lot. So I'm trying to do this one first. I slipped my washer off both sides. <laughs> Came up here in pieces. That one. Now for number two. This is probably the trickiest part of taking this apart. 
getting it back together. These two bolts on, nuts on. Magnets always aren't always for picking up stuff. Sometimes they're handy for doing things like this too. spot to get to. It takes a lot of time to turn them one rotation. That one's good. This one I just kind of got that one little peg in the way. only really one spot to grab a hold of it. inside here that just pushes down on that with throttle. Just make sure you have that in the right spot. Or 
water filter, I guess. Not really much of a filter, more of a screen, but. Alrighty. There's all the old parts. Just kind of bend that wire down there so it holds it back. Let's see if I can't take it out here. bad for uh, something that's at the newest 73 so at least 39 years old so I think that's pretty good like I said it's missing I think that's where the uh, on off switch goes but I'm not sure correct me if I'm wrong and then the uh, there would be a little slide there for the 
choke, but I mean it functions, cuts, still has the little lock for the throttle. The rope is kind of short, starting to get a little bad spot in it there. I might replace that before I try to sell it, I don't know. So, we'll see. But she runs. I'm in at a total of $18 now. So, thanks for watching.